so much for being here tonight. I'm glad Allison got it out the way. H-U? You know. You know. Um, so I know many of you may never have met a theoretical physicist in your life, so here's what one looks like. But I wasn't always a quantum scientist. In fact, fresh out of college, I taught high school math in North Philadelphia. And I ain't gonna lie, it was tough. Maybe tougher than physics. But it was one of the most transformative experiences of my life. I had this one student, I'll never forget her. She told me once, I may be a product of the hood, but that don't mean I have a ghetto mentality. You best believe I'm a child of God. Now, what she said stuck with me, and that wasn't just because of the colorful language that she used, but she reflected on how her reality and her thoughts were not going to be limited by others' perceptions. She knew there was a source to her identity, and she knew that how we appear to others is never the whole truth about who we are. For tonight, I want to take you on a journey from the commonplace to the quantum that might just make you reconsider the limits of your reality. Our three guiding questions, what is real, what is truth, and how are we connected? Let's begin by considering a tree. What do you observe? If you're using the five senses, you might notice the roughness of the bark, the swaying and softening of leaves in the wind, the cool shade it offers, the rich colors emerging in different seasons. You might count the harvest and wonder how many seeds come from a single tree, or even deeper, how many trees can come from a single seed. How deep do its roots go? And what else is hidden from us about our perception of the tree? Now consider a rainbow. Unlike the tree, we can't touch or smell it. Maybe we can taste it. But if you experience synesthesia, seeing sound as color, maybe you can hear it. But to experience a rainbow like this, you must be equipped with eyes to see in the visible spectrum of light. If, like some insects you see in the ultraviolet, you would see a totally different picture. The rainbow is the result of an interaction, an interaction between dispersed light from water droplets in the sky and an observer with eyes that are tuned to see. Even though we can't use all our senses with the rainbow that we do with the tree, does that make it any less real? What do we mean when we say, what is real? The answer to that question is ultimately determined by your observational capacities. And I'm not just talking about your physical eyes. I'm talking about all your senses, talents, giftings, and tools. So the, the, the way that you experience reality is governed by what you are capable of observing. So I want you to dig a little bit deeper. So can everyone in the audience raise your hand, please? Look at your neighbor next to you and observe the hand in front of you. Is it any less real than your own? So now follow me down the rabbit hole a bit further. How do you picture an electron in your mind's eye? In fact, an electron is a quantum particle that has many different facets, right? Quantum scientists have learned from decades of working with electrons that they exhibit both particle and wave-like properties. As you can see here, they pop into our observations and return to the realm of potentiality, just mere possibilities. In fact, this is commonly drawn in this way, but it's a highly misleading picture if you think of the electron as just orbiting the central nuclear sun. In fact, if that were the case, all matter in the observable universe would quickly collapse. So the models that we have in our mind for things are not always mapped exactly to what is reality. So quantum physics has taught us that there are essential distinctions between either or and both and thought. Dualities like those I just described for the electron, which can be both wave and particle, abound in multiple areas. Each set of binaries lies along a spectrum, and along each spectrum lie possibilities for truth and falsehood. Subjective things, those subject to taste, personality, and preference, can be true. And objective things validated by external measurements can be false. The standards of truth are what matters. 
Albert Einstein summed this up when he said, everything that can be counted does not necessarily count, but everything that counts cannot necessarily be counted. Reality is complicated, though, and there exist also dualities in what we know and our ability to know. We see dimly, imperfectly. There exist symbols, pointers, metaphors, maps, and models, including our narratives and our stories that guide us through the complexity of reality. So here's the rub. Physics is used to describe the natural world. But what about the supernatural? Let's put these two domains into contact through a third, the supranatural, which essentially lies beyond your awareness and potentially beyond your community's awareness. This boundary with the natural is not static. It constantly moves and shifts. The supra and the supernatural, what we sometimes call the mysterious, are not the same, they, but they both intrigue and encourage us. They incite, challenge, and call to us. At one point in time, the electron existed in the supernatural for everybody, but gradually it came to be known in the natural. The electron to this day exists in the supra for some because not everyone has the same access, capacity, experience, or exposure. So as Pontius Pilate asked the king of kings, what is truth? Scientists resort to explainable models based on our observations. These models of physical reality are grounded in philosophical frameworks, but neither our observations, our models, or our frameworks are the same as the complexity of truth. You've seen this on social media, where people curate a public image that isn't always consistent with their private lives. What's behind those appearances, right? Our models and frameworks for truth should always lead us to learn more about truth, right? But as we learn more about truth, we find out how little of truth each of us contains. Meditate on that. So here's an example from our work in the quantum biology lab. Um, this is a standard picture of the brain, but we go deeper into the neuron. And you can see large pyramidal cells and axons conducting sensory signals. It's a hive of metabolic activity because about a quarter of our energy consumption fuels the brain. It's still a mystery, though, how all this information processing occurs on less power than a light bulb. We can peel back the veil further and go deeper into the axon level. Dr. Nathan Babcock, a postdoc in my group, prepared these at the atomistic level so we can witness a bundle of stabilized microtubules. A whole new realm of light opens up in this arena, exciting quantum absorbers called tryptophan. The effect is like exciting an ultra-fast quantum fiber optic with speeds much faster than the chemical signals you learned about in school. So the video you just saw is the result of a huge number of observations made by communities of scientists and other individuals over centuries and millennia. But the observations that help us answer the question, what is truth, are not merely limited to these. They don't even have to be made by human beings. But for humans, we can divide these observations into the general and the scientific though the line between them can sometimes blur. Scientific observations usually require lots of time, resources, and specialized knowledge, so fewer individuals can practically verify them. Scientists resort to communal measurements that are based on tools and devices to enhance our senses so we can see small particles, track infrequent events, and search distant galaxies. It's no wonder, then, that some common folks might consider scientific experts as priests of nature. What is always needed for any observation is genuine communication. Scientists must communicate frequently in order to ensure they agree on the terms of their observations. If they don't agree on the terms, science can't proceed in a meaningful way. Do you remember when the rainbow or when I asked you to raise your hands? If one of you were blind, how do you agree on the terms of your observations? There's another set of observations that I will call spiritual because their intent is not to probe the physical world around us, but rather to search the depths within as whole beings rather than constituent parts. These are rarely made by external instruments, but they can be made by a conscious observer, self-referential and introspective, who chooses to listen to truth. So earlier this year in March, 
we were privileged with our K-12 liaison, Dr. James Murray, to dedicate and inaugurate the Quantum Steam Lab in Philadelphia, the first of its kind in the nation. Here, take a look at what the kids are up to. These are our VR devices. These allow you to see the solar system. They allow you to see the Earth, the moon, the sun, and the stars. So here in the Quantum Steam Lab, our QBL scientists are working with educators to create novel VR environments for these young quantum questioners. These thinkers are learning what it feels like to be an electron. Their questions are being taken seriously, and they will see the full spectrum of humanity and science represented, both historically and in the present day. So our observations, our measurements, and our questions are co-relations and they are opportunities for communication. Before we conceptualize the eye of the self, as children, we interact, we relate, and we connect to others as you. So instead of, I think, therefore I am, a better way to do science is, we are, therefore I relate. So I hope I've been a trustworthy guide tonight as we answer the three foundational questions. It's a long journey, lifelong one, so don't be discouraged if you didn't catch everything. But we can always go back to our experience with the curiously shy electron. It is your responsibility to observe the world you inhabit, enhance your awareness, communicate with others, and shine more light on your world. Thank you so much for your presence and attention, and may the truth be with you. Have a good night. Thanks again. Thank you.